Hello and welcome back. This is part 10 of my tutorial series showing you how to make your own cartoon from start to finish with Toon Boom Harmony Premium. I'm sorry it's been a while since the last video. I have recently got a two month full time animation and rigging job so that's been taking up a lot of my time. So this is part 10 which is a pretty big milestone for me so I do just want to quickly say thank you so much to everyone who has helped me get over the 500 subscriber mark and also for all the kind comments and messages I've been receiving. It's really nice to hear that these videos are helping people out. Over 50% of the watch time are from non-subscribers. So if you are finding these videos useful, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, and or sharing as your support really does go a long way. And that will help us reach as many people as possible so that nobody has to pay for a paid Toon Boom course as I provide all of this information entirely for free. If you are following along with the series though, I would love to hear how you're getting on. So feel free to let me know in the comments section or even tag me on Twitter with a screenshot of your rig, whether it's Sunny or one of your own rigs, because I'd love to see them. In the last video, we finished building his arm and in this video, we're gonna be building the eyes. So if we zoom in here and we select the eye and go over to the node view, we have got the eye here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a composite for the eye. So we are gonna plug in the pupil and the eye there. And then I'm just gonna move these elements over to the right. I'm gonna move this head composite down to the bottom. Then I'll move these just to the right a little bit. And then I'll move this over to the left just in case we need to expand. And also I'm gonna make another peg for the eye and the pupil. And I'm gonna call that eye master. Now we want to mask that pupil inside of the eye. So I am going to separate out the eye into color art and line art, just like we've done before. So now we have those two things separated. I'm gonna put the pupil in between the line art and the color art. Now it is underneath the line. And then we wanna cut that pupil to the color of the eye. So now when you move the pupil, it stays within the eye. Fantastic. And if you wanted to, you could make new substitutions for the pupil. Say you wanted uh, different ones for different expressions. So maybe you want a smaller one if it's angry or you could make a bigger one for like a, a cute expression. So for that pupil, I could press Alt Shift D to duplicate it. And then we'll come up to the select tool and we can increase that. Put a little shine on it as well, a highlight. So now you've got a cute pupil and a normal people. So the next thing we want to think about is the different types of eyes your character might have. So we're just going to go through and do a few different shapes for this eye. So we're going to select the eye, we're going to go to the drawing substitutions. Let's go to the drawing tab and I'm just going to press Alt Shift D to duplicate that drawing substitution. We'll do a few different ones here. We'll do a sad one and an angry one and maybe some blinks as well. So let's do the blinks first. So I'm going to select the line tool, make sure I'm on the line sub layer, and then we've got the line selected and I will hold shift, drag that across. And then if we go over to the color, we're going to delete that and then we're going to recolor this so that only the open part of the eye is white. And then we'll do Alt Shift D again. And now we will do a closed eye. And we don't need any color for this closed eye because we don't want the pupil to show. So if you remember, we masked the pupil to the color and because there's no color, it's not showing. So now if I scroll between these shapes, you can see we've got a little blink. So you can see that I've got this whole line here, but if you wanted to, you could always delete this part of the eye, depending on the style of your character, but we're gonna keep that in. So let's create a sad and angry expression. So we're gonna go back to the first one. Again, Alt Shift D, the line down here. We could bend that a little bit as well. And for the sad eye shape, we are going to duplicate the angry eye with Alt Shift D again. And this time I am going to flip the art. So we've got a sad eye shape as well. And if you wanted to, you could make a enlarged eye shape. So we're gonna take that and we're just going to increase the size of the art like that. So we've got a bunch of different shapes that we can use for expressions. And that's a relatively simple way of making the eye. That might work 
perfectly for you. However, if you do want to have a little bit more control and have those eyelids separate, I'll show you how I do that. So we are going to create some eyelids now. Part of this eye composite, I'm gonna press Control R. I'm gonna call this eyelid. And for the time being, I'm just going to place that on top of everything, make a peg for it and connect that to the eye master. So with this eyelid, I'm simply just gonna create a square. So we'll go onto the line, select the eyelid, and I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger than the eye. And then we can fill that in. So now I want to bring that just above the eye, around about there. Something else I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna add deformers to this eyelid and that will allow us to control this curve here. So the best way of doing that is go to animation, envelope creator for deformation points, create envelope. So now you can see you can control that. Uh, something I am gonna do actually is just move these points down to about halfway and I'll show you why we're doing that in a bit. So we've got our eyelids there and now we want to mask it to the eye. So if you wanted the eyelid inside this eye, let's go to the node view and just like we did with the pupil, we are going to place that eyelid in between the line and colour art of the eye but over the pupil. So that will be there. So now when I move this eyelid you can see it's inside and again I am going to cut that with the color art. So now when I bring the eyelid down, can have a little bit more flexibility with it and we can adjust the shape of the eyelid as well. However, you might not want to have this line show here. So you might think that it would be best to bring the eyelid in front and instead of having it cut by the color art, we're just gonna have it cut to the entire eye. So now when I bring that eyelid down, that eye line disappears. However, if we go into render view, you can see there's this anti-aliasing line here. And that's something I spoke about in the last video. So to get around that, what we're gonna do is we'll unplug that and we're gonna separate out this eyelid. So we will copy and paste the line art and the color art from the eye. And we're gonna connect these to the eyelid. So this line art is going to be masked by the eye. Invert that. So now that works. However, this color is still visible over the head. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the eyelid and we're going to change the color of this to a mask color. So let's change it to a green because we don't want this to be visible. We just want the eye to be masked by this. So now we're going to put a cutter in for the line art of the eye and also the color art of the eye. And this color art here, which is just the mask, we're going to plug that into this and into this. And we can unplug this because we don't want it to be visible. So now the color art has disappeared. And when I move this eyelid, it masks it nicely. However, you can see that the pupils um, not being inverse masked by that. So, so what we need to do, we need to do another cutter for the pupil and we need to plug that into there. And you can see that the pupil is cut by the color art of the line. And then after that is getting inverse cut by the eyelid. So now when we bring that down, that will hide the pupil as well. And then if we go to the render view, you can see there's no anti-aliasing line here. It's all nice and clean. So let's neaten this up just a bit. So we're gonna reset that eyelid to its default position by pressing R. So something you'll notice is the only way of selecting that eyelid is by coming into the node view, finding it and clicking this node so that you can control it. However, you wanna be able to grab that eyelid while you're animating without having to come into the node view and search for it. So we're gonna make a controller or a handle for this eyelid. So we're gonna come into the eyelid, we're gonna to go to the overlay sub art layer and we're just gonna make a half circle for this. Fill that, let's delete these points here straighten out this line at the bottom and I'm just going to color it in with this con color that I've made which is also semi-transparent. I might shrink it down just a little bit and we're going to move that towards the top of the eyelid around here and the reason we're putting it at the top is because if you remember we put that deformer on this eyelid. If we put it up here that won't be affected and that is only on the overlay of this eyelid. So if we come back to our node view, we need to make that visible. So we are gonna put a overlay layer in. And something I'm gonna do actually is make a controller comp. 
So we're going to make a new composite and then that will be connected to the eyelid. So now it becomes visible and we're going to plug that into the con comp and if all of our controllers will get connected to this and I'm just going to put this in front of everything. So now I can easily grab that eyelid and just bring it down as necessary. However, you'll notice if we come into the render view that is visible. So we want this to be only visible in this OpenGL view here and to be invisible in the final render. So we're going to bring in a visibility node. We're going to connect that to the overlay. We're going to click the yellow box and we're just going to untick soft render, keep the OpenGL view ticked. So in render, it disappears. Open GL view, there it is. So I'm just gonna expand this head backdrop. Is this gonna start getting a little bit juicy? Put this down to center. Let's move these over. We'll move this over as well. So we've got one eyelid there. However, it would be nice to have a lower eyelid as well. So let's put one of those in. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna press Control C, and you might be tempted to press Control C V. However, if I do that and then I plug this in, if I move that eyelid, the other eyelid is gonna move with it. And that's because it shares the same functions. And I'm not going to go in depth about this, but I would recommend you check out Zbird's video regarding copying and pasting stuff. And I'll leave that in the description below. So we are going to delete that. And to make a duplicate, instead, we are going to press Control C. We're going to right click and we're going to press Paste Special. And then the three options that you want to tick are always create drawing files, link to original palettes, and create new columns. So now we've got another eyelid. We're going to call that eyelid lower. Plug that into the eye master. Let's just bring it down here for now. And I'm going to come up to my select tool. Then we'll select all that art and we'll bring it down just underneath the eye because we want that to be the default position when we reset it. So because we've moved the art, we're going to have to move the deformers as well. So let's show the deformers, go into setup mode, and then we're just going to move those down. And if we wanted to, we could bring that up a little bit like so. And then we're just going to have to do the same cutting that we did for the lower eyelid. So let, we'll move these over a little bit and we'll copy and paste the line and color art, put this line art just under the line art for the upper eyelid. I'm gonna make another cutter for that pupil. Put the color art in there. The line art needs to be cut as well, so we're gonna put a cutter in there. That's gonna get masked by the eye. And then we're gonna make another cutter, or you could do it the composite way as well. So we're gonna have two more cutters come under here, and then we're gonna attach the mask to those two. And then we're going to get our overlay layer for the handle. Plug that in there. We'll get the invisibility node as well. Plug that in there. We've got our controllers here. So now when I grab that, eyelid lower and eyelid upper. I might bring that circle just up a little bit more. And then I can bring these just above it. So you don't have to hand the uh, handle there if you don't want to. You could nudge it to the left a bit just to make it outside of the mouth. We could even make it a little bit smaller as well. So there we have our two controllers for our two eyelids. Huzzah! So the next thing we want to work on is the eyebrow. But before this, actually, I just want to put a deformer on this eye, and that will allow us just to have a bit more finer control over this eye if we need it. So with this eyebrow, you could just keep it like that, so you can have your frown and your sad, happy, etc. What we can do is we'll create a duplicate substitution shape, and for this one, we're just going to make it straight. Put a deformer in this. So you could just put a curved deformer in that, in there like that. And that will allow you to manipulate that shape. But something that would be nice is if we could bring this eyebrow down to the eye so that when we cover it like that, this eye gets masked out by everything that's above the eyebrow. So we're going to undo the deformer that we just made. Let's just delete it entirely. And we're going to go into the drawing tab and on the color view, we're going to select a rectangle. We'll go to the mask and we'll also make it a thickness of about three and we'll make it about the size of the eye. So now we can put a deformer on this, envelope creator, and now we'll go back to the node view. 
and we're gonna put line art here and then we'll bring in a color art for the mask so we want that mask to mask the entirety of the eye so the eye is everything we have attached to this composite so we can put a cutter here and then we can attach that eyebrow to that so now when we bring down this eyebrow that it masks this eye and you can either make a new drawing substitution where that eyebrow is wider or you can just widen it with the deformers that you made and you'll notice this color breaking but that's just because we're not in render view. so there we go let's undo all of that so with this eyebrow i am going to make another peg for it because we're going to be making another eyebrow and i'm just going to call this eyebrows both just in case i want to control the eyebrows together when i'm animating and then i'm going to make another peg above the eye master and i'm going to call this eye and brows and then we can attach that there so i'm going to make another backdrop within this head just to make things a little more organized so we're going to select all of these and we're going to come up to here make a backdrop for it and we'll just call that io1 so now that's a little bit more organized bring that down a little bit so now i want to take this eye and i want to duplicate it over to the other side and this is the method that we're going to be doing for everything that we want duplicated over to the other side like the eye arm and the leg and the eyebrow as well so let's select this i'm going to press ctrl c and i'm going to click paste special again just like we did before we did paste special but this will save us having to select all those options that we did before or ctrl shift b so now we've got another eye and we're going to come into here and we're going to call it i2 and we can do a slightly different color for it as well so we have our eye and we just need to connect that up now so that eye master is going to be connected to eye and brows and then this is going to be connected next to the other eye and we also need to do the controllers as well so i'm going to copy and paste those and we're going to get the eyelid and we're going to plug it in there both of the eyelids and then yeah these are for our controllers so we're just going to plug it next to there we also want to do the same thing with eyebrows as well so paste special again with those ones let's just move that over a little bit so this is eyebrows both so i can connect that to there the color art for the mask is going to go into there and the line art can go next to the other brow. What's this? This is the mouth. So I think I want the mouth to be over the eyes, I guess. But we're gonna keep the eyebrows on top of everything. With that antenna, I am just gonna make a composite for it just to make it a little bit neater. So you will have noticed that this eye is in the same position as the other eye which is not what we want so let's select that and in the tool properties we are going to flip it and we're just going to bring it to the other side so you can use mirror mode to flip it as well to see if it needs any adjustments but that looks good however you'll notice because we moved it with the transform tool if we click it and we press r it's just going to reset back to the other eye so we want to bring in something called a static transformation and we're going to put that just underneath the eye master so the best way to do that is to put it above it and then change this to be above there and then if we come into this static transformation and we click bake all incoming transformations kapow and we close that you'll see that it's now flipped to the other side but if we click the eye master and press r to reset it skaboosh that is now its default position because we've told Toon Boom that this is the default position because of this static transformation. And that's something we'll need to include for the arm, the leg and the eyebrow as well. So let's do that. So we're gonna get this eyebrow. We're gonna do the flipperoo, just bring it over to the other side and then another static transformation. Reset. Also, you will have to um, manually adjust the pivots as well. So let's move that over to here. And same for that second eye. So let's grab the pivot, which is, oh, it's down here. And we'll just put it in the center where the pupil is. 
let me just check the um, the pivot positions for all of these as well because we have made new nodes. So the I master. So this is something that you'll need to be aware of as you're making new nodes. Pupil looks good. Um, we'll need to do the eyelid as well, both of the eyelids. So we'll just put that just below that controller. This is something really we should have done before uh, copying it over to the other side, but that's okay. And we've got a peg for eyebrows both. So we'll just put that in the center. This is the eye and brows. So we'll put that, put that around here. And there we go, we've got our eyes. So something which is really useful is we've got various eye shapes here. And if we want to make new eye shapes when we're animating, which is something you'll most likely want to do, you won't want to make an eye shape for this and then have to do the same eye shape for the other one. You want to tell Toon Boom that when you make a new shape, such as a new hand shape or foot shape or eye shape, eyebrow shape, whatever it is, that gets cloned to the other one as well. So the way we do that is if we go to the eye and we find it in the node view, we'll select that eye. I'm going to go to nodes, clone selected nodes, drawings only. So click that, that will make a new eye next to it. And then we can go over to the other one and then simply swap out that eye. So we'll put it above and then we'll take that one out and we can delete that. So now whenever you make a new drawing for this, a new drawing will be made for this one as well. And we can do the same thing for the pupils. Something you'll notice though is when I drag these eyes to the side, you can see that they come out of the head. And we don't want that to happen for this character anyway, but we do want the eyebrows to be outside of the head so we can raise them up and they can kind of be a floating eyebrows. Uh, but we don't want the eyes to come out of the head so that when we're doing the turnaround, when the head turns, we want those eyes to be masked inside. So in order to do that, we need to go to the head and we're going to separate it out. So the line will be in front of the face, but behind the eyebrows. So we're going to move that to there. But when I do grab the face, you can see that it's behind the line of the head. However, the eyebrows are above. And also we need to get the color for that head as well. And that color is going to be behind everything. So let's plug it right at the back there. We need to cut it to the color as well. So let's get another cutter for the eyes. And we'll put that under there. And that will be masked by the color. So that when we move that, it's masked inside. So there we have it. Our eyes are complete. So just to recap, we've got the pupils inside of the eyes. We've got different eye shapes. We've got independent eyelids that we can control with a deformer. And also we've got an eyebrow that we can control with a deformer as well that cuts the eye and we've masked those inside of the head. Thank you so much for joining me. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the math. See you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below, or you can ask me live over on Twitch where I stream this stuff five days a week. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. Your support really does go a long way. And if you want to be notified of any future videos, you can click that notification bell. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.